to Rihanna Runs the Marathon. In today's video I'm going to take you through a few bits that I've picked up from running on Zwift in order to help you out. So the first tip I want to talk to you about is about how you can add a goal to every single run that you do. This will work if you're running on your own or if you're running in a meetup. It can also work when you're doing group events and you just set it after you've joined the group event. So for this tip, you go up over to this add a target button, you click on it and then you can add a target. So because it already thinks I've done a little bit of running while I was setting up, it's already started to kind of tick off the these targets that I've done today. So as you can see, you've got a 30 minute run. You could try and burn 300 calories. You could try and do 20 minutes in a certain zone. You could do a 5K. These are all kind of like goals that they think that you want to start with. So these are just easy go to's. But you can also build your own. So you can just choose however many minutes you reckon you want to do. You can change it into the zone zone time, you can change it into zone fours, three, two, you can do kilometers, literally anything that you want, you can kind of set up and go for. It then will also let you enable distance markers. A 5K, it will tell you every kilometer, I think actually every 500 meters, when it kind of gives you a little kind of celebration like oh you've done 500 meters well done so that can be helpful for some people i kind of like that it does fill this in it's, it kind of gives you a little bit of incentive so that when you click on it and you start running a little bit more it fills in ever so slightly as you go on through your time which is smart and that might be a thing that you didn't know you could do and we're going to talk about this box here where it says run type. If you do cycling, you might be a little bit more used to this box on Zwift, but for runners, we tend to ignore it. And I am gonna tell you that you should not be ignoring it. So if you want to do a run, but you also wanna have intervals or you wanna know when to increase the incline, you basically wanna do a workout, but you don't know how to. This is the box. So you click on the training icon and then it will take you to all these different workouts that you can do on Zwift. So for instance, this 321 is the one that I talked about in my week three review that I did. So it was three minutes, then two minutes, then one minute. And they're all based on the best of you, your best 5k time on Zwift. So for me, this one is 110% of my 5k pace. And so that works out as for 37 minutes per kilometre. I know plenty of people that they're 110%, it's going to be a lot more than that. But that's where I am now. It will also tell you when you last completed it. Obviously, that isn't a real date, but it thinks it is. <laughs> Not sure what's going on there. Here it's right. So who knows what this big string of numbers is. It will also tell you how many stars you got the last time you did it. And you get a star for every single kind of interval that you do at the right speed. So for this one, I dropped a star during this section, I think it was, because during the cool down, I lost the cadence in my, uh, in my run pod. So it just completely went still. So my average was not the best there, but that's in the less than 30 minutes bracket. And as you can see, there's a whole load of other workouts for you to try. <laughs> Click out of this. It will also give you, once you've accepted into something, it will give you all the workouts for you to do. So I was talking about Zwift Academy run earlier for 2020, and I managed to do seven of them. So yeah, it will give you all of those workouts. So you can go back and you can attempt them again. For instance, I might want to go back and I might want to, I might be like, oh, this was actually a really good session. Let's redo it. Let's try and get 12 stars this time. And they're there literally for your leisure to do whenever you want. There's an, less than an hour and this has some... 8400, you've got a 5k test here to try and see if you can run as fast as you can, things like that. 
And then once you've found one that you like the look of, so I'm going to go for one of these try workouts, maybe this one that I haven't done. We're going to click workout and then it takes us back to here. But as you can see, it's now got the workout loaded up in the run. So we're going to click run. Then after a bit of loading, your screen will look like this and it will talk you through the workout pretty much the whole way through. So this bar will come up and it will tell you what you need to hit at certain times. At the side, it gives you a rough estimate of what's going on. You can't quite see all of them. It kind of rolls up once you get a certain amount of the way down. So then you can see the rest of it. It will always tell you the amount of stars you have. So yeah, that's the first thing that you should know about doing workouts on Zwift. I actually really enjoy them on Zwift. I think for me, it's sometimes a little bit easier to focus on them when they're on my screen the whole time. And that's literally all I'm focusing on. And we're still in the workout on Zwift, but this time we've got our Zwift companion app, which is nice and handy. Now, this time, as you can see, you've got some new buttons here. And these buttons will correspond with what you're doing. So if you click on this button, it will skip you ahead to the next interval. And you can do that until you finish if you want. And you can pause the workout and it will come up with workout paused at the top here. And if you click the up button, it will let you put your speed up on your treadmill. So if you don't think that's quite hard enough, you can change it. It will change the whole workout though. So if, you, if you're wanting just to change this, this period you'll change it up and then you'll notice that over here I still have to work pretty hard I'm not quite sure if you can see that so I'm going to put that back down I think it was about here there's also a different button on your companion app which will correspond with your workout so if you click on workout it will show you where you are working and where you should be working so for instance right now I'm not running so therefore I am down here you want this dial to be in the middle of the zone that it corresponds to. So then if we go skip again, so it will then move over to here. And you really want your thing to be right in the middle of that. You don't want to be pushing on either side. You want to be in that zone. Again, in this workout screen here as well, you can add bias to it and that's the same thing that happened before where it was increasing the speed so if you don't think that's fast enough you can just keep you can go up to 110 percent and that's it and i think you can go down to 90 percent because it really does yeah 90 percent because it really does want you working more towards where you actually are and not kind of lying yourself or cheating yourself out of a good workout so that is my second tip to do with your workouts whilst you're in Zwift. We're back in the main Zwift app for this tip. And this is a twofold tip. So the first tip I'm gonna share with you is how to take photos of your run. So if you're running just with your desktop or well, a laptop or a tablet, you can click down at the bottom and it will come up with all these different icons that you can use. And if you click the camera, it will take a, like a screenshot of what you're seeing on Zwift. The second way you can take that picture is on the Zwift companion app. Again, I would encourage that you're using this on a phone because holding this whilst you're running isn't ideal. And you can take that picture. Oh, allow. You can also change the way your avatar is viewed by clicking this little eyesight button, or this eyesight button. And that will change what you're seeing in the screen view. So this is just showing me what I can see. This is just behind my avatar. You got to the slightly down, slightly up, the round, to the front of, all of that stuff, all of that good stuff. And that can influence the way your pictures look. So if you had something to the side of you that you wanted a better picture of, you can quickly switch to the side angle, take the picture, and then bring it back to where you're comfortable running. But the actual tip that I wanna share with you is something that happens after you've finished the ride or the run. So I'm gonna stop running. I'm gonna save and exit. All right, take two, because the first one didn't quite work out properly. We're gonna take a photo of what's happened. Again, remember you can do this on the companion app if you want to, it's a little bit easier. You're going to finish your run, you're going to end your run, and it's going to show you where you ran. 
So I literally, I just did 100 meters just so that it would save and show you all of this. So it's finished properly, it knows I've done something and it's still not coming up properly. What I was going to show you for that last tip was that you can get rid of the sides from your photos. So I've got a couple of examples to show to you and they they take off all the rubbish around the side like all the people that are near you, what your kind of pace is on the side, all of that stuff that you don't necessarily need when you're sharing photos onto Strava or whatever app you're using in order to push them across to. And that is when you go to that end screen, it's supposed to show you the pictures that you took during your activities. And it will ask you whether you want to upload them to what you're uploading it to. So above that kind of save and exit sign that was just coming up both times when I just tried it, there'll be the different photos that you took. In the corner, the top right hand corner of every single photo, there'll be a little green kind of graph. If you click on that, it will take off all of that side rubbish and you'll just have the clean photo of you. I think there's a few bits at the top just letting people know your distance and the time. And yeah, that's one of the tips that I didn't really know until a few weeks ago. You can get rid of the side rubbish that make your photos look all junked up. Hopefully it will work better when you go and try it on your runs on Zwift and you can have lots and lots of photos without any of the rubbish at the side. So the final tip for running on Zwift is one that I haven't actually done myself yet whilst in Zwift. And that is that there is a trail running section in Zwift. I think officially it's like a mountain bike path, but obviously you can use it as a trail running route. So if that's what you prefer to run in like normal life, you can also emulate it whilst you're in Zwift. So I believe if you do the jungle route, uh, you run 2.5 kilometers into the jungle. There's then a turn off that you can do that will take you down these kind of dirt paths that are away from all the trails. And that's the only way you can access it at the moment. So it isn't a way to just put on that route. You have to turn off of another route to get there. So it's one for those who want to navigate whilst they're running in Zwift. The best way to do that is through the companion app, so it will come up with little directions that you can click on when you need to turn. There's also a U-turn if you go wrong. <laughs> so don't worry if you click the wrong thing and you can go back and change your direction. It's a bit like real life.